So, several years ago, I had been having a repetitive dream, and it's a dream that many, many pastors have, if not all pastors at some point. It is a dream that is the equivalent of the dream that most people have of standing in front of a large group of people wearing absolutely nothing. Have you had that dream before? Yes, and Pete here, who's a retired pastor, I know that he's shared the same dream, this equivalent dream as pastors, where we walk into a crowded room and someone comes up and says, oh, I'm so glad you're going to be preaching. And we realize, wait a minute, we didn't know we were preaching. There's no sermon on notes. There's no sermon in my head, and I have no scripture reading chosen. And then if Pete was anything like I am, the rest of that night for me, when I would have that dream, I would be running through possible scripture readings and putting together sermons, and it would be a very restless night. Well, I no longer have this dream, and it's because quite a few years ago now, I went back to my home church in Sandy Creek, New York. Small, small community, and not a very large United Methodist Church. And I had not been there in 13 years. The year, the last time I had been back to northern New York before that visit had been for my sister's memorial service. So I chose not to go back for all of that time. And I knew that when I went back, I would be concentrating on, on my memories of her, and I didn't want to experience that entirely when I went back. So I called ahead to the church, and I offered to do special music, and the minister agreed. So the Sunday came, and I went into the church, and I introduced myself to this minister whom I'd never met, and she and I thanked her for agreeing to let me do special music, and she said, well, I want you to say a little bit about yourself. So I asked her, well, what will the sermon be? And I'll fit it into the theme of the service. And she said, no, no, that will be the sermon. Oh, my dream, it came true. <laughs> and so I, I prayed about it very quickly, and I thought, and, and I realized that there was a sermon that I had preached to every single congregation I'd served a sermon about that church and what they'd done for my family and for me. And I'd never given thanks to them, and they had never heard that sermon. Unfortunately, some of you already have, <laughs> because you've been in the previous churches. But I'm going to share that story with you tonight. And it goes like this. It was many years ago when I had just turned 13. And the week before Thanksgiving, less than a week before Thanksgiving, my father died. And so we somehow made it through Thanksgiving. But we sat down as a family, my mother and my brother and sister and I, and we decided that we were not going to celebrate Christmas because we weren't a church family. And we didn't feel that we had anything to celebrate that year. It was just too difficult. Well, somehow, the local United Methodist minister in this community of 3,500, including all of the outlying area, this United Methodist minister heard about my family. And so the first week in December, he called my mother. And he said that every year the church had extra Christmas trees, and he wanted to give a Christmas tree to my family. My mother's pride kicked in, and she said, no, we don't need charity. We don't need a Christmas tree. We will cut our own down. So she sent my brother and I out into the woods to cut down a Christmas tree, and we did, and we brought it back, and we put the Christmas tree up, and it looked so lonely standing there, that of course we decorated the Christmas tree. But that was as far as we were going to go. Nothing more. But then, about a week later, Ivan Greenfield, the minister, called again. And he said that each year they chose a family in the church to give gifts to, a giving tree. 
And would we please accept the gifts that they wanted to give us from the church? You can imagine my mother's response. No, we will buy our own presents. And so we all got in the car, we drove to Watertown, New York, and the big city, and we bought Christmas gifts for each other, brought them home, wrapped them, put them under the tree. But that was as far as we were going to go. It was asking too much to think of Christmas as a celebration. And so about a week before Christmas, suddenly all of these church members started showing up at our house with platters of food, appetizers, turkey, ham, all of the fixings for a huge Christmas dinner. And my mother looked at us and she said, what do we do? We have way too much food for just the four of us. And so she started inviting people to Christmas dinner. <laughs> well, it got to be Christmas Eve day. And we talked again as a family. And we decided that we needed to say thank you to the people in that United Methodist Church. And so we decided to go to worship for the first time time as a family on that Christmas Eve. They only had one service. I see some of you yawning already, but this isn't the 11 o'clock, you know, it was only one service and it was 11 o'clock at night. So we went to that worship service and it was beautiful. It was the traditional, like we've done tonight, of lessons and carols. And then at the end of the service, like we will do, they lit the candles. And I looked around, and this was an old church, over 100 years old, with beautiful stained glass windows. And I looked around at the stained glass windows and the light of Christ reflecting in each person's face. And I started to cry. Started to cry when I realized where we were and what was happening. And I looked at my brother and my sister and my mother and we all had the same reaction. We all sat there crying. That was the moment that Jesus found a home in my heart. And I've often said that at that very moment, it felt like my heart grew three times larger. <laughs> What happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say, that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And then, the true meaning of Christmas came through, and the Grinch found the strength of ten Grinches, plus two. Yep, that's how I felt. <laughs> so... After that Christmas Eve service, we started going to church as a family, and we didn't miss a Sunday. And we went through confirmation, and on that very Easter, my sister and my brother and I were all baptized, and my mother and my brother and sister and I, all four of us, joined the church. Well, I shared that story with that congregation in Sandy Creek, New York, and I finished the story, and they looked shocked. And there were some, and these were my neighbors, and people that, that from age 13 on, they became my family. We had never told them the impact that they had had on us. They had no idea that that Christmas, when they let the light of, sh of Christ shine through them, it made a difference. It made a difference for my family. I wouldn't be standing here tonight except for those wonderful people and God working through them, shining that light. We here will receive the light of Christ tonight. 
My prayer is that when we go out this evening, we will take that light of Christ that's within us out into the world so that more lives can be changed, more lives can be brought to the light. Amen.